Hello class and welcome to today's algebra lesson which is about writing and graphing equations in point slope and standard forms. By the end of today's lesson you will be able to write and graph equations written in these two different formats. So we're first going to talk about point slope form which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So similar to our slope intercept form the m stands for our slope and then in our point slope form instead of specifically using the y intercept we can use any point on the line. That's what the x1 and the y1 stand for in this equation. So the things in red are going to be replaced by a numerical value. The parts in black will stay in the equation. Those negative signs can turn to positive if it is minusing a negative. So, for example, we start with y minus 3 is equal to negative 2 thirds in parentheses x plus 1. So when we are graphing, our first job is going to be to pull out our point. So if I look over here at my x, I've got x plus 1. The format of the equation said it's supposed to be x minus x1. So because it's turned into plus, I know that that value is a negative 1. And then I come over to my y value, my y1, and since it's y minus 3, that means I'm going to pull out 3. So that means negative 1, positive 3 is a point on my line. Then I'm going to flip and look at the slope, which in this case is negative 2 thirds. The negative, which I put up with the 2, tells me to go down, and then the 3 would tell me to go right. So I'm going to go down 2 and write 1, 2, 3. You only need those two points, but if you wanted to go again, you could go down 2 and write 1, 2, 3, and you could continue that pattern. Then you're going to go ahead and connect those with a straight line through all of our points. And then once again, just like last chapter, we want to make sure that we are putting arrows on the end to say that line is continuous and keeps going. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Picking out our point, we have 3, negative 2, so 3 to the right and 2 down. Then our slope of 1 half tells us to go up 1 and right 1, which is how we got to the second point. We could have kept going and adding those points as you continue going up and right. When we're talking about writing these values in point slope form, again, our general format for this equation is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So when you're writing these, essentially, if they give you a slope and a point, all you have to do is plug your values in. So I'm going to go y minus y1, or my y value, which is negative 2 is equal to my slope of 7 fourths times x minus x1, which in this case is 3. And to simplify, I turn that double negative to a positive. So my equation is y plus 2 is equal to 7 fourths x minus 3. Go ahead and try this one on your own. So we plug our values in, we get y plus 3 is equal to 5 sevenths x plus 6. That's what happens if we are given one point and the slope. If we are given two points, we're going to need to calculate our slope first. So I'm going to go ahead and label x1 y1 and x2 y2. So to calculate my slope, I'm going to do y2, which in this case I label as 3 minus y1, which is negative 1, over x2, which is negative 3, minus x1, which is 2. Double negatives make a positive, so I am at 4 over negative 5, which when I simplify that, we just pull the negative out front to make it negative 4 fifths. So then you have two options for how you can write this final answer. We can write it x1, y1 as written, so y minus negative 1, which turns into y plus 1, is equal to negative 4 fifths times x minus 2. That would be our first option. 
You also could plug in the second point. I could have chosen to label these first one, or excuse me, the second coordinate as x1 and y1 if I wanted to. So I also could use that as my coordinate in my equation. If I did that, I would have y minus 3, since my y value in the second one is 3, minus 4 fifths, and then times x minus negative 3, or x plus 3. So even those the, though these two equations look different, they both would simplify to the same slope-intercept form, and that is something that we are going to discuss in our next lesson. For now, we are just focused on being able to write them in point-slope form. We'll go into why two equations can have the same line in our next lesson. Go ahead and write one of the two equations for the line that goes through these two points. So we have our slope of one half, and then you can choose either the first point or the second point as the coordinates that you are plugging in. So that wraps up our point slope part. The other form that we have is our standard form of the equation. This is going to be written in ax plus by is equal to c. So this is where x and y are on the same side of the equation. There are three rules that must be applied to have it in standard form. First, a, b, and c cannot be fractions, so they must be integer values. The next rule is that a and b can't both equal zero. What this means is either x has to exist in the equation or y has to exist in the equation. So there's either going to be a number in front of x, a number in front of y, or both numbers are going to exist, but they can't both equal zero. The last rule is that the a value, so whatever is in front of x, needs to be positive. So those are our rules for our standard format. When graphing in standard form, we actually did cover this in our last unit. We're going to graph by using the x and y intercepts. So I'm going to start with my x-intercept, and I'm going to say 3x minus 2 times 0 is equal to 9. Or you can just say 3x is equal to 9. Then you would go ahead and divide by 3 on both sides, and you would get x is equal to 3. So that tells you that your first point on your graph is 3, 0, that x-intercept. Then we flip over and we solve our y-intercept. So I would say 3 times 0 minus 2y is equal to 9. 3 times 0 is 0. So that leaves me with negative 2y is equal to 9. Dividing both sides by negative 2, I get that y is equal to negative 4 and 1 half. So my y-intercept is at 0, negative 4 and a half. So I'm going to go over 0 and down 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. Then I would go ahead and take my straight edge and connect through both of my dots. I'm going to have to adjust that just a little bit. Um, but your line should go through both of your points, making sure, once again, that you have arrows on the end of your graph to say that it continues moving in both directions as you graph. So when you are graphing in standard form, you are doing what we did last unit, which is to find the x and y intercepts. Go ahead and try this one on your own. So our x-intercept is at 2 and a half, our y-intercept is at 2, and then we've got a straight line connecting both of those points. When we are writing in standard form, uh, the problems that we're going to focus on in this particular lesson are going to be using the x and y intercepts. So I've got my y-intercept of 0, 2, and my x-intercept of negative 6, 0. In order to find the value for c, you are going to take your x-intercept, which is negative 6, and multiply by your y-intercept, which in this case is 2. So our c value is going to be negative 12. 
Then, when it comes to the A and B values, A is going to be what's in front of X. We're actually going to use the Y intercept value for that number. So our A is two. On the flip side of that, our B value is the X intercept number. So negative six. Why does that happen? When I put this all together now, and I have AX, so two X, BY, negative six Y is equal to negative 12, or excuse me, negative 12. So I need that negative sign in front of there. So I have 2x minus 6y is equal to negative 12 as my standard form of the equation. When we look to solve then for our x and y intercepts, if I'm solving for the x intercept, that means that our y value would go away. So 2x is equal to negative 12. That's how I get my negative six. If I was trying to solve for my y-intercept, that would mean my x would go away. So negative six, or excuse me, negative 12 divided by negative six is positive two. So our a and b values come from the opposite intercepts. Go ahead and try this one on your own. So we multiply and we get c is 45. The A value then is going to be the opposite, so that y-intercept of 9. And the B value then is 5, giving you 9x plus 5y is equal to 45. One more thing with writing in standard form that we didn't encounter in those first two examples is what happens if we have a negative A value. So in this case, I'm going to solve for C by doing my x-intercept of 8 times my y-intercept of negative 3, which gives you negative 24. Then when I look at my a value, aka my y-intercept, I have negative 3, and my b value, my x-intercept, is going to be 8. So when I write that all together as an equation, I'm at negative 3x plus 8y is equal to negative 24. If you look back at those initial rules for standard form, we're not allowed to have a negative in front of the x. In order to fix that, we're going to take this whole equation and just multiply by negative 1. So I've got 3x minus 8y is equal to positive 24 is the final version of my standard form. So if you ever end up with your a value being negative, the last step is to multiply everything by negative 1. The other piece when you are writing standard form is we can look at what happens with vertical and horizontal lines. So in this first example, I notice that negative 3, 5 and negative 3, 7, both of my x values are the same. So what that means is the equation in standard form then is x is equal to negative 3. The x values are not changing, so those are going to be the same. You could write it out as 1x plus 0y is equal to negative 3. That would be the full format of the equation. However, when we simplify, we end up with just x is equal to negative 3 because our x value is remaining the same. Go ahead and try this next one on your own. So in the second one, we've got that y is equal to negative 8 because the y is staying consistent. If you have questions about this or anything else from the lesson, please feel free to reach out and let me know.